Hi, I'm Fat Mike. I want to share with you a tongue-popping jerk chicken recipe and a little bit of history about this Jamaican barbecue with roots that go back over 2,000 years. All of this today on Fat Mike's Pet. jerk actually refers to a method of cooking meat, fish, or produce. Its origins go back to the Arawak Indians who settled Jamaica around 2,500 years ago. Jerk cooking was originally used as a process of preserving food so it could be taken on long hunting expeditions. The Arawaks accomplished this by cutting the foodstuff into strips, seasoning them with various spices, and then hanging them on racks to dry over an open fire in the scorching Caribbean sun. Today, we know the finished product as jerky. The Arawaks passed this knowledge to Spanish settlers and traders, and when West African slaves were brought to the Caribbean islands in the 14th century, they picked up this technique as well. In 1655, Jamaica was conquered and taken as a spoil of war from the Spanish by Great Britain. The Spaniards fled to Cuba. In their haste, they left behind around 1,500 slaves in southern Jamaica. These newly freed men and women escaped to the Blue Mountains and forged a life for themselves. They became known as the Maroons. The Maroon people refined jerk cooking from a preservation technique into an early form of barbecue. Over time, this evolved into its current form we know today. The different spices that can be used in jerk are numerous. Usually you will find cinnamon and either white or brown sugar. However, there are two crucial ingredients that must be included for it to be considered authentic jerk. These are allspice, which are dried and ground pimento berries, and scotch bonnet peppers. These are better known as habanero peppers. Now, why do they call it jerk? Actually, no one seems to know. You will likely hear as many different stories as the people who tell them to. It's simply one of those words that has lost its meaning to time. Now that you had just a little bite of the history behind jerk cooking, let's get over to the pit and get some smoke a rolling. Fall is in the air at the pit, and it's a beautiful day to make some jerk chicken. Now there's a lot of ingredients involved in this recipe, but don't let that scare you off. There's nothing exotic in this concoction. Every one of these ingredients can be easily found. The first thing you're going to need is the star of the show, the chicken. Here we have about five pounds of butchered bird, three whole leg quarters, and a couple of boneless, skinless breasts. Next, you're going to need a blender or a food processor. Let's get started with the seasonings. By the way, you can find the complete recipe for this marinade in the description below. You're going to need allspice, some thyme, a little sage, nutmeg, cinnamon, a little garlic powder, some ginger, a decent amount of brown sugar, some black pepper, a bit of seasoned salt, and a little cayenne if you want it hot, or chili powder if you want it not. Now for the liquid ingredients. 
Here we have some extra virgin olive oil. Soy sauce, maybe a little more. Next is some white wine vinegar. You can also use regular white vinegar or even apple cider vinegar, whatever you like. Finally, a little bit of OJ. Now we puree this into a thin paste, but you know how that works, so it'll be okay if I don't show that to you, right? Okay, now we're going to add some fresh squeezed lime juice. Squeeze out as much as you can. Now for the habanero. My family doesn't like a lot of heat, so this pepper has had the seed pod removed, capsaicin released from the inner wall, and thoroughly rinsed with some high proof alcohol like vodka or rum. Let's get all of that blended in there. Man, all this work is making me thirsty. Now that our marinade is done, we're going to pour this into a two gallon freezer bag. You could also use a large bowl if you like. All you need is something that will allow you to get the chicken thoroughly coated. I like the bag because it makes it real easy and there's nothing to wash after I'm done. Okay, let's get our chicken in there. Whew. I'm already getting hungry. This is going to be some damn good eating. Seal up the bag part way and get as much air squeezed out as you can. Otherwise, you're going to have one heck of a mess. Seal it up the rest of the way and run your fingers over it another time or two. Make sure you have a good seal. Shake and massage that chicken vigorously. Make sure that flavor gets spread all over every square inch of that chicken. Unlike red meat like beef, the white meats, poultry and pork, need to have flavor infused into them. And we're done. This is going into the fridge for the next six hours or so. You can marinate the chicken for up to 12 hours if you like. Any longer than that though and the meat will start to break down and become mushy. During that time the meat will be soaking up all those rich complex flavors. The longer you marinate, the more flavor will be absorbed. Jerk is traditionally slow cooked over a lattice of pimento wood. Now I have no idea where to get pimento wood in Indiana. So I'm going to be doing this on my smoker and use sugar maple to get that rich smoky flavor. But you use whatever you want. Charcoal, cherry, whatever. If you don't have a smoker, you would want to set up your grill for indirect heat and cook it that way. I've got the cooking chamber at a temperature of about 250 degrees. At that temperature, it will take about two or two and a half hours to get this cooked. But trust me, it's worth the wait. All right, we're about 45 minutes into this and these are cooking nicely. I'm going to rotate these so they cook evenly. I'll just move these leg quarters a little closer to the firebox since they'll take a little longer to cook than the breasts. We'll check these in another 45 minutes and see how they're doing. An hour and a half in and these look great. Another half hour and they'll be ready to eat. Will you look at that smoky thing of beauty? I can just taste that allspice and cinnamon drifting through the fall air and I can't wait to dig into this chicken. How about you? So remember, the next time you want to create a masterpiece in your backyard, come see what's possible at Fat Mike's Pit.